Hello colleagues and welcome to this online seminar on learning to collaborate, collaborating to learn, led by Dr. Janet Sammons. Um, Janet has been engaged in various collaborations and ventures with us right from the start of the Emerge project back in the early 2000s with the Emerge online conferences. And um, it's been great to have a chance to touch base at various stages of her um, research and publishing career, um, to know about her research on online collaboration, her research about um, how we use online spaces for research, and her research about collaborative learning online. Her new book is quite fantastic. Um, it's research-based and very practical. Towards the end of the book, what she does is to share a pattern language for the design of online collaborative learning. However, this pattern language is applicable to both online and face-to-face -face contexts. And um, it seems that it's also very useful beyond just formal learning situations. So it could be applied to collaboration in teams. It could be applied to collaborative work. It could be applied to collaborative research. I think that this book is going to get Janet an even larger and more diverse audience for the excellent work that she does. Um, and I'm looking forward very much to the rest of this event. I think it's going to be a treat. Janet, all yours. Okay, well, thank you very much, Tony. And I'm always uh, happy to be a part of uh, efforts with Emerge Africa, and, and uh, I'm one of your fans from across the pond. So um, as I've noted in the discussion area, um, I'm joining you from Boulder, Colorado, where it's uh, just morning over here, um, but uh, happy to be here. And, you know, as you're going and introducing yourself, um, as some of the people have started to make note of uh, kind of what your particular interest might be and um, so that I can, you know, hopefully address more specifically the, the uh, topics that are of interest to you. And we will uh, continue the conversation in the forum where uh, we can get into a little bit more detail um, and I'll be happy to answer uh, any kinds of questions that you might have. So um, what I'd like to uh, go through today is um, kind of begin by talking a little bit about, you know, why I think it's important um, that we uh, learn how to be good collaborative partners and to introduce the uh, taxonomy of collaboration, which is uh, the kind of conceptual framework and language that Tony was mentioning, and then to uh, talk about some ways that uh, kind of model can be used for planning um, and for assessing outcomes. And we'll just see, uh, you know, if we're not able to get through, you know, all of those uh, steps here, um, we'll continue in the forum because I would like to make time for discussion. So I want to start by just saying, and I think, you know, obviously you all are here because you understand that collaboration is important. and. I just want to, you know, kind of uh, emphasize that. I think collaboration is, imp is central to professional and academic life in just about every field. And, you know, to me, it's even bigger than that because um, we need to collaborate across distances and disciplinary boundaries to solve the big problems of our time. I, you know, was pleased when the... Um, Paris Climate Agreement included partnerships as kind of the uh, ultimate uh, goal in that series of 17 goals because it shows that um, we can't just look in one field or discipline to solve um, big problems. So when we uh, think about that and we think about our own uh, collaborative experiences, um, sometimes uh, we'll meet someone and we think, oh, you know, it's kind of uh, as Tony was describing here, we you know, have common interests, we share um, commitment to the same kinds of uh, 
things and collaboration can be you know quite a, a natural process and you know we can just kind of just do it but other times it's more complex because it's not just something between individuals and sometimes as individuals we don't, don't even choose uh, we may be assigned to work um, with others or perhaps a, a grant or a funding requires that we um, involve you know other kinds of agencies or organizations um, sometimes we're working uh, in more than one culture um, or across uh, different kinds of language boundaries, even even language, uh, disciplinary language of terminology. And then, you know, we need a more formal process. We need a more thoughtful uh, process in order to be successful and to keep people uh, feeling positive about what we're trying to do together. So my premise here, you know, for this entire area of, of work is that for one thing, collaboration is not just one kind of uh, activity that, you know, there really are a, are a variety of ways that we can collaborate and that we can learn the skills that we need to be more successful with them. And that, we, you know, by designing learning activities that allow people to acquire, you know, in a, in a really strategic way, the kinds of skills that we need to be collaborative partners, you know, at the same time they're acquiring subject matter. So that's kind of the underlying uh, premise that I'm working with here. So um, in terms of de defining collaboration, um, the definition I use is that it is an interactive process that engages two or more participants who work together to achieve outcomes they could not accomplish independently. Sometimes those outcomes will be, you know, say we, we will have, you know, one outcome. Uh, so we're working together on a project and we're going to create a report or we are going to, you know, do research together that will, you know, generate some uh, findings that we've, uh, you know, all worked on together. But sometimes we collaborate um, to focus, you know, we're focusing more on the process. So um, we, we're engaging with one another um, while we are working on something, but we are going to achieve outcomes independently. So um, we might collaborate so that we can, you know, learn uh, something or so we can, you know, understand something that will inform um, the work that we're doing on our own. So I think this is important when we start to think in educational context that, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes we're asking people to create outcomes together and other times we're asking them to uh, learn together in order for them to uh, strengthen the work they're doing on their own. So, you know, in order to do that, you know, and thinking about sort of the different ways that we, um, that we might operate so or different reasons we might you know collaborate in a, in a learning context so um and you know there's there's no right or wrong answer it's not a matter of that one is better than another it's you know what is appropriate you know in the given situation uh, and by understanding that we know you know kind of how to organize things so you know at this uh, at this first level this might be where um I know something um, that, um, and and you know something, and you know to, we we exchange ideas. So uh, we're sharing, you know, what we know. We're sharing resources so that we can, uh, you know, figure out how to how to you know get to the next level. Then at this uh, knowledge transfer, this would be where um, I know something that you don't know. And so I'm going to um, try to uh, coach you or to share, you know, my knowledge with you so that uh, we can move forward. So, you know, in this, I think, um, if you are familiar with uh, Vygotsky, who is quite um, uh, respected in terms of social learning, but this is really the, um, you know, he, he talks about the knowledgeable other. In other words, one of us knows 
something the other one doesn't know, and the collaborative process is designed uh, to, to make that transfer. But then sometimes we might be working together and none of us know, you know, none of us have the skills. You know, we, we don't, you know, we're, we're all learning. And then we have to figure out how to acquire those sk new skills or knowledge together. And then at the, at the, um, this top level that, you know, through some of these other processes now, we're going to create something new. You know, we're going to answer the question with in a new way. We're going to come up with uh, some solution to the problem. So, you know, thinking about the, um, the sustainable development goals, we're just, you know, as mentioning a moment ago, you know, with a co-creation here, you know, we're, we're coming up with some solutions to, um, you know, global uh, climate issues. Um, in order to come up with to those new, new solutions, we're probably going to need to um, exchange and transfer and, and acquire new knowledge. So I think that, you know, as instructors or instructional designers, as we're trying to think about how we want to organize something, um, it's good to have some idea of what it is um, that we, you know, expect the students to do or what we think they will, will need in a given situation. So... Uh, I'm going to uh, introduce this taxonomy and kind of walk through this, and then um, I will, you know, pause and and take a a few moments for you know questions, any uh, clarification you might need. So you know, this is kind of the model as a whole, and I'm going to just you know kind of walk through this um, piece by piece, but. Essentially, um, I think that, you know, there's kind of a, a, a line here that, you know, the areas up on this part of the model are, you know, kind of um, skills, capacity, activities that we would use uh, when we're collaborating. And, and we'd use those throughout a collaborative process. Whereas these down here are describe um, different ways that we might organize the work. So in other words, we're going to use these processes um, throughout um, both the, uh, the design and organization of how we're going to get something done. Um, and, you know, so they're, they're not kind of, you know, an end to themselves. So, you know, I use the term uh, taxonomy here uh, to describe, you know, something where, you know, there are relationships between each of these um, elements, but it's not a linear model. And the ways that these uh, different uh, kind of uh, stages of it fit together would be uh, unique to each situation. Um, but we can use this kind of language to, uh, to map it out and, and communicate it. So... You know, as you could see, you know, along this uh, side of the model, um, we have, you know, the trust continuum. And, and you know, that is um, important here because, you know, in order to uh, be, you know, uh, comfortable with, you know, working with other people, you know, we've got to um, have some level of uh, trust. And, you know, as we get into a more complex um, collaborative efforts and, efforts that involve people who cross, you know, more and more boundaries um, than, you know, the, the, you know, need for, a, you know, a higher level tr of trust will be, um, become apparent. And, uh, you know, the definition that I use uh, here is, you know, that, that we're confident that the other person we're working with is not only, you know, able to meet the goal we're doing, but is also, you know, shares the commitment to, to reaching it. So, you know, that's, you know, kind of a factor th throughout. So the first um, part of this taxonomy is um, this symbol for uh, reflection. And I think, you know, sometimes, um, you know, when we look at the literature and, and uh, different kinds of materials about collaboration, you know, that typically are focused on the group, you know, how the group is formed and um, the relationships in the group. But I think that the 
you know, kind of focus on the individual is really uh, important. And this was, um, this reflection piece is one that I added to the taxonomy um, based on uh, the input that I had from, from people I interviewed uh, doing, doing the research behind this. So here, I think that it is important and especially when we're um, as instructors to to understand that you know each uh, individual needs to um, they need they need to be able to you know build that sense of trust and identity that you know going to you know I'm going to feel okay about uh, being a part of this group I I you know it that sense making process and that you know kind of you know how does you know how does what I have to uh, share fit with you know these other people in the group um, and you know what do I think about it and so I, I think it's it's important to um, be mindful of this uh, reflection piece you know especially as instructors you know we're designing um, you know different kinds of activities so. Um, we might add in, for example, uh, a, a journal, you know, kind of uh, component to a collaborative project or uh, something that, that allows uh, the student to um, kind of work through, you know, their own uh, experiences, you know, both uh, intellectual and, and, uh, and emotional about being a part of the group. So... Um, you know, I think, you know, Tony, as you're saying, sometimes, you know, everyone may, may not be at the same level in terms of knowledge. It, it's really, you know, the commitment uh, to the process and the commitment to the group, I think, you know, it is important because then we can, then we can kind of figure out, you know, whether, you know, we need to acquire new skills, you know, with, the, with our collaborative partners or whether we have you know, some strengths within the group that will, um, you know, let's say, well, we've, we've got, you know, one person who really knows how to set up the, um, you know, the shared, you know, shared platform where we can, um, you know, shared files where we can, you know, file our, our, our documents in process. You know, maybe everyone doesn't, you know, come in with that skill, but if we've got, you know, some strengths in our uh, process in our group, then we can proceed. So I think, you know, kind of understanding these pieces, you know, allows people to then say, you know, where, you know, where do my skills fit? You know, what, and where, what is it that I still need to learn in order to um, succeed with this group? But I think, you know, there are a lot of, um, of obstacles that we need to, to understand that, you know, I, it, you know, it's interesting when I began my uh, research initially, um, I, I felt that as an American that uh, the obstacles to collaboration were something that were kind of unique to our culture, but once I started to talk with people around the world, it seemed like, you know, that's uh, not the case, that, you know, these are issues that, you know, we deal with everywhere. So, you know, the kinds of uh, things that we need to to you know, just understand that, that, you know, people are coming to um, collaborative process sometimes, you know, with, uh, you know, competitive win-lose types of attitudes or, you know, kind of a, an, an ethic of individualism of feeling like, you know, I'm, I just want to get this done by myself. Um, I don't want to help anybody else. And I also don't want to listen to anybody else. And, you know, if those are, uh, you know, issues that, you know, a part of um, kind of the culture of your organization or with your participants, uh, then uh, it's important to kind of make time to address those rather than expecting uh, people are going to just, uh, you know, jump right in and, and feel uh, that they can succeed with the collaborative efforts. So, um, uh, again, you know, some of the activities to uh, promote reflection, journal writing, um, portfolios, um, individual consultations, and feedback on individual outcomes. So I use these uh, stars to represent outcomes in my um, work. So here, you know, the, the collaborative partners are all uh, creating their own individual outcomes that um, they're, you know, you know, around the kinds of activities that would 
um, promote reflection and help them to kind of uh, address uh, some of those uh, individual obstacles. So, you know, the kinds of issues here, these might be uh, things we can develop some uh, prompt questions for, discussions with the group, um, as well as uh, activities they might uh, c complete on their own to work through those. So then, um, you know, the first stage of the, the, the next stage is uh, about dialogue. And so, you know, this may seem like, well, yeah, of course, you know, you, communication is important, you know, to any project. But here, you know, when I'm talking about um, both online and face-to-face -face, uh, communication, um, you know, we have just, you know, at the very basic level, just the ability to to listen and have a constructive discussion. Um, well, you know, being able to do that online means um, we're able to use the uh, communication tools. We um, we all have access to the same tools. We've agreed uh, to, you know, um, communication, whether it's uh, synchronous or asynchronous, et cetera, um, that will work. Uh, you know, with our uh, groups, and we use those experiences to find the shared purpose and coherence. So, you know, we use uh, dialogue um, to build the commitment and um, to engage the other uh, partners, you know, in, you know, working through a collaborative process. So, you know, we obviously need to uh, communicate at the beginning of a project, but that's something that we need to continue to do throughout um, whatever it is that we're working on together. So, you know, as I mentioned, especially, uh, you know, when we are, you know, working in either an online or a blended kind of a situation, um, you know, to think about, you know, what, you know, at what point do we need to really sit down together? Um, you know, which of the, you know, as we're thinking about the collaborative process and how we're going, you know, what it is we're trying to get done, um, you know, when when do we need to meet, either online or face-to-face, -to, -face, um, to really, you know, work things out? And and where will it be uh, useful to have, you know, documents that are shared documents that are posted or to use email or, you know, other kinds of things? And then this um, near synchronous, this is what the term that I developed to describe things like, say, text messaging, where you know the other person might not be online right now, but uh, you know we can expect that they're going to um, respond fairly soon, and it's kind of an elongated conversation. So, you know, thinking about the ways that we uh, work together today, um, a lot of it is going to be, you know, you know, especially if we're across time zones, a lot of it's going to be either asynchronous or near synchronous but you know to me you know the big question is then you know when do we need to really come together um, to work through things and and how do we use our time when we have uh, say a, a blended classroom where we've got a class meeting what are we going to do that will really help to um, to move the collaborative process forward so then you know the next uh, level is what I call a uh, review. And so here um, we're familiar as academics with the peer review process, um, but that's, a, you know, a little bit, you know, kind of has a little bit different purpose than, uh, you know, review within a collaboration. This, this, pro this stage, this can really make or break a collaborative activity because if we're working together on something I have to be able to trust that I can share what I've created with you and you're not going to either try to steal my, not worry that you're going to try to steal my ideas or that you are going to be overly um, critical or that you're going to criticize uh, something that, that, you know, I'm, you know, say, for example, if it's a written piece, you know, maybe at this stage I, I don't want um, you to give criticism about grammar or you know structure. I want your feedback on my ideas. So part of this review stage is about the trust and willingness to share what we've um, you know what we're working on with our collaborative partners, 
Um, but the other part of it is learning how to give and receive constructive feedback. And to me, a big part of that is being able to define, you know, what it is um, we're asking for, you know, feedback on and to create perhaps some parameters around that. So uh, here, you know, again, you know, critical review of each other's works within mutually acceptable, acceptable boundaries and criteria. So, you know, then, you know, when we get down to the sort of basic skills here, um, you know, you know, whatever, uh, you know, technology processes we've decided to use, whatever technology tools we've decided to use, that we, that we know how to do that because, uh, you know, we, we shouldn't just assume that everyone um, has, you know, experience with, you know, the tools we're used to using or that we find those um, to be, um, you know, acceptable and, you know, for example, private. You know, there might be things where you say, well, you know, I don't want to post this in a shared forum. I want, I just want your feedback individually. Well, you know, how to, you know, make sure that, that we do that. You know, I think it's, it's obvious that dialogue is essential to successful um, efforts in this uh, review stage. So then, um, and I'm kind of, you know, moving through these somewhat a little bit quickly because then I want to open it up and, you know, respond to any uh, questions that you have. So please uh, post, you know, as we're going. So, you know, as I mentioned uh, a few moments ago, you know, there is the reflection, dialogue, and review as kind of skills, mindsets um, about collaboration that we use throughout the whole process. But then this part of the taxonomy is about how we organize our work together. So in this uh, level of uh, parallel here, I think this is probably, you know, would be the most typical way that people would think about working together. So if someone said to all of us, um, here's this project we want you to do together, um, we might say, okay, well, um, Bessie, you do this part, and uh, Jerome, you do that part, and Tony, you do another part, and we'll go off and uh, work on our own, um, you know, what we've, what we've committed to do, uh, you know, kind of side by side. You know, or it might be that, that each of these arrows might represent you know, a small group. So maybe if our collaborative uh, group is a large group, then we might, you know, kind of divide into, um, you know, uh, kind of smaller groups in order to get things done. So here, you know, if you think about a classroom, um, you know, if everyone in the class is involved with uh, collaborating on the same, you know, big project, then, you know, these uh, arrows might represent kind of small group activities that, that could be done. So here, I think uh, some of the important uh, things to think about are that, you know, we need to figure out how we're going to divide the work up. Uh, going back to that initial, you know, slide about the knowledge, who has the knowledge about, you know, maybe people have particular expertise, somebody's really good at, um, you know, finding good articles in the library, and somebody else is really good at, um, you know, writing, you uh, you know, and outlining, you know, what the what the paper is going to be, and so you know, we we kind of figure out who has what skills and and divide the work in, into fair uh, kind of bits that we can get, get done. So you know, then um, you know, again, you know, if we're doing it online, there you know, kind of more uh, practical uh, skills that we need to to be able to make sure that we're um, that we're you know all. Uh, you know, moving the thing forward. Kind of similar but different here, you know, we're still looking at, um, you know, dividing, you know, the project up in separate pieces that we can complete as individuals or small groups, but here it's sequential. So here it might be, okay, uh, you know, Tony's going to take the first step and, uh, you know, outline this, and then it's going to go to, you um, uh, Nelson and and you know complete the next step and then uh, you know to um, Jacob who will you know take it to the next step. So here you know it's not not only that we've got to figure out what those individual components or what those components of the project might be that could be um, completed. 
there's a temporal aspect to it. There's a timing. So we need to say, well, if this person does not do a good job in terms of quality or get it done in time, then these people are in trouble, right? You know, they can't do their part unless this person has done um, his or her part. So, you know, there's a kind of a little bit more uh, complicated, um, you know, level of, of um, planning that, that goes into uh, sequential versus uh, the parallel. So, you know, we're going like kind of one step a little bit more complicated. So here, you know, again, you know, we've got to be able to, you know, look at the project as a whole and figure out what the series of steps might be and then, you know, create some system where, you know, each person understands the ways they are going to build on the work that the, that the previous person has done. And so here, you know, because we've got a timing factor and a quality factor, you know, we, we might need, you know, something, um, you know, even if it's on an informal basis, you know, you're thinking about there's, there's some kind of management involved because we've got to be able to track progress. We've got to decide uh, together, you know, are we going to use track changes? Are we going to use Google Docs? How are we going to keep track of the different versions? Um, so there are some, some practical uh, skills involved with this um, as well as the kind of organizational skills. So with either one of these, um, you know, there are, you know, kind of a series of, of things that we need to think about, you know, understanding the elements of the project as a whole, um, being able to divide it up and, and fairly um, allocate the tasks, um, set the timelines and the standards. So, you know, what quality are we looking for? Are we looking for a final draft, a, an outline? What is it? Um, and, you know, how are we going to coordinate? How are we going to communicate as we're going? Um, you know, what kind of accountability is the accountability, you know, say in a workplace, the accountability might be a project manager or it's the, the supervisor. In an academic setting, the accountability might be it's to the faculty member uh, who is teaching this class or it could be within the group that we have somebody who um, decides they're going to take that, you know, we decide that person's going to take the role for, for example, making sure everything is done on time. But then, you know, we have the, the tricky thing of, you know, as we're, we would say on my side of the pond, where the rubber meets the road is, you know, how are we going to uh, combine these things? So if we've all, if we've done these separate parts, we've got to, if, if, if we're going to um, generate some collective outcome from those, we've got to figure out how we're going to get from those separate parts to that one, uh, that one deliverable. And that's, you know, that's where the, the you know, that's a, that's a tricky part of it. Um, there we've got to be able to communicate and we've got to be able to um, trust one another to say, well, maybe what this blue person has done, uh, you know, is going to need more work before it can be compiled into this. Maybe, um, you know, we, we need to look at how we're going to blend these things with um, the sequential process. I think part of the uh, the tricky aspect of uh, kind of, you know, building a collective outcome is, you know, if this person uh, completed the tasks um, at the very beginning, how do we keep this person involved, you know, throughout the entire project? You know, how, you know, how are all of these people going to stay um, apprised of, you know, the, the developments as, you know, kind of each stage of the project goes, you know, depending on, you know, how complex it is and, you know, is this something that's taking place over, you know, a couple of weeks in a class or are we talking about, you know, a major um, project that might be, you know, months or years um, and, and we need to, you know, then, you know, think about how um, we're going to keep everyone uh, on track, even if their individual uh, contribution to it has has completed. Right. So you know, as uh, Jerome points out, then it's um, you know then you know as you put it, the reporting back to the whole group. So this is where that um, I mean, you can see perhaps how in this you know kind of going from the separate pieces into the collective piece. You know, here's where we've got the community. We've got the dialogue and the review processes are, are going on here 
um, as well as the reflection, because maybe you're, I'm thinking what I did was, you know, the most fantastic thing anybody could have ever done. And then when I share it with the group, they're like, mm, you know, that's, that's okay, but you know, it's going to need a little more work. Well, I might have some feelings about that. So, you know, how am I going to say, well, all right, I'm going to swallow my pride because I am committed to making this shared outcome the best that it can be. Um, so, you know, as we're, as we're, you know, in this, this is the, the kind of uh, uh, tricky stage here where, you know, when we're trying to create a shared outcome and in that, you know, place, in that space is where we need um, the dialogue and the uh, review um, e experience. So, you know, here's, you know, where we might, when we're trying to map out our project, we might say, well, this is where we need that synchronous meeting. You know, this is where we need to either get together face to face or online and really talk through this. You know, this might be, you know, this part might be too hard to do. This we can do separately and asynchronously. But, you know, as we're mapping our project out, we need to build in a time for a meeting at that stage um, to figure it out. Um, Yes, I, I think, you know, the, the humility um, piece is really, uh, you know, that that's a part of, you know, working with others, you know, too. And uh, as you pointed out, you know, earlier in your comments, it's the mutual respect. And, you know, how do we, you know, how do we try to uh, foster, you know, those kinds of things, you know, with our students? They're not... Um, say, as tangible as, as, say, learning the subject matter of a class. So then the, the final, you know, piece or option for the, you know, how we're going to get this thing done together is, you know, what I call synergistic. So here, you know, we're all going to sit down and brainstorm. Um, we're all giving our input. We're working together on this. You know, we're not, you know, we're not dividing it up into separate pieces. So, you know, in this model, the arrows are the process and the stars are the outcomes. So here, you know, it, it's it's completely woven together. Um, so, you know, as you start to think about, say, you know, a collaborative project, uh, you could see how um, perhaps that, you know, there it might be that, you know, when we build those uh, synchronous times into our project, that's when we want to have this uh, synergistic process. This might be at the very beginning of the project where we're brainstorming what it is we want to do and how we want to get it done. And we're, you know, all giving input. We can't, you know, we can't separate out the individual pieces from this um, because, you know, we're all, you know, we're all in it. But we might go uh, from this <clears throat> into either a parallel or uh, synergistic approach or um, this might be something that comes, you know, at the at the end. It might be that, say, you know, in in here that we say, well, this is where the synergistic process is going to happen. Or it might be that we have a synergistic time for the synergistic process, you know, at the beginning. Then we go off and do, you know, our individual work, and then we need another synchron synergistic experience, you know, as we are going to then um, put it all together into our uh, collective outcomes. So, you know, here, um, you know, you can kind of see why I, you know, said that, you know, the highest trust level is needed at this point because, you know, we're meshing our ideas. So we've, we need to feel that we can trust others in order to contribute um, our best ideas. And uh, then, uh, you know, we need some organizational skills to say, you know, how are we going to put this thing together? I kind of liked this quote, then I think this kind of gets to some of the points that um, that J Jerome was making about the mutual respect that, you know, here, you know, it, it really is a mindset, you know, and, and I, I like the way that, that Howard Gardner described this. It, you know, the ability to integrate ideas from different sources into a coherent whole. Um, whole. Um, and, you know, to me, even if we have something where uh, we want people to go through a collaborative process for the learning and then uh, create their own, um, you know, final paper or whatever, you know, or their own dissertation or whatever they're uh, creating on their own, that they still have um, the ability to incorporate 
uh, what they've learned from others into, you know, what it is that they are, are creating. So, um, you know, whether they're, you know, trying to, you know, move from this uh, collaborative learning to, you know, their own outcomes or to shared outcomes. So the, the synergistic phase, I think that, you know, what I would say, um, Jerome, is that, the, I mean, it, it could be that you have a, a collaborative project, something that is um, uh, not very, you know, not not something that, that is a long project that, you know, we're going to all, you know, come together and, and figure this out. And that's, you know, that that is the way that we're going to work together. Um, or it could be that this is a part of the larger process. So that's, you know, kind of, um, you know, what I'm, you know, trying to, uh, to describe here is, you know, we, you know, any one of these is not enough, you know, on its own in most situations. We need a combination of things. So we need to figure out, you know, how we're going to map it out. So here, you know, have an example here where you might say, well, okay, here's here's how we're going to map out this project. You know, we're going to begin with, uh, um, you know, with, a, you know, setting up our communication uh, process and, and figure out how we want to, um, you know, our, do we do we want to use um, synchronous or asynchronous tools? Uh, you know, how are we go You know, do we need to begin by uh, even describing? Uh, you know, working through differences in terminology. I mean, I have been working on a collaborative uh, writing project with uh, someone in the UK, and you know, there are tr even though we're both speaking English, the terms that we use for different things, um, you know, are very different. So you know, a part of this dialogue might be, you know, coming to our common language. How are we going to define our terms, um, you know, for the basis of what we're doing together, et cetera. Um, you know, we figure out what the reflection element is going to be. If I'm in a classroom, you know, I might say, well, you know, we're going to, um, if we're in a, a uh, you know, either a face-to-face -face or an online class, I might say, well, you know, every week of this project, we're going to have a uh, a discussion that is a reflective discussion where we can talk about how things are going, how we feel about it, or it might be that we assign uh, a journal kind of exercise, and that you know something that goes throughout the um, the process. So, you know, with this example, which I've just you know put a few up here, so that maybe we start with that kind of discussion, uh, then we have a brainstorm about the project itself and how we're going to um, get it done, what kind of uh, um, activities, what are the components, and, you know, how are we going to um, move forward then, you know, we divide up the tasks and go off and, um, you know, work on our individual um, pieces, you know, then we need to have this, you know, review process so that we can look at what everybody's done and, and decide, you know, how to move forward. And then, you know, then we're going to, uh, you know, compile them and, you know, put them together. Now, you know, I have other, um, you know, kind of project maps that have, you know, many more uh, elements in them. But to me, you know, the value of, you know, kind of, you know, thinking through all of these elements and, you know, how within the parameters of the project we're going to get those things done and, then using this taxonomy as a kind of visual language to map it out, then, you know, we have a shared uh, kind of um, blueprint for what we're, we're going to do together. And we can use that also to, uh, to evaluate, you know, as we go, you know, whether something is on track or not. So in thinking through you know, how to, you know, we might use this as instructor. So we, with uh, the design of assignments that would be, you know, say a smaller learning activities, it might be either, you know, even within one class or, you know, a couple of classes versus say a larger project that, you know, if we can take the time to map this out, then, you know, students, it's not only that they, they have a clear plan, um, that they've agreed to, but also that they're learning how to plan that whole process of trying to understand what it is we need to get done, how are we going to do it, and 
you know what what it you know, you know what kinds of approaches we might use at different stages of the project you know when they are then um, uh, you know in a new situation in another class or as a, a professional uh, when they you know are um, you know, in a situation where they need to collaborate, they are not going to be intimidated by it because they're going to say, "I, you know, I, I know how to do this. Um, you know, you can, if you're in an online class or a face-to-face -face class, you know, you could, you could post these kinds of maps so that, you know, we can then say when we have these reflective discussions, well, how did this stage go? You know, did that work? So we might say, well, you know what, it literally would have been better if we'd had a meeting at this point or, um, you know, things fell down because uh, X, you know, we need to add in, maybe we need another, we need another review stage, you know, or something. We, you know, we've got some way to look at, uh, you know, how these things worked or didn't work. So in uh, my book, uh, the whole book is organized around this taxonomy that I've just described to you very briefly. Um, and not only, you know, what each of these stages might be, but also um, how to use this, you know, kind of as a tool. Um, and so these, what I call these icons that represent this visual language, um, I have a, um, a shared folder with these icons in it and a little kind of how to, um, you know, how to map your assignments, you know, kind of handout. And I will post that uh, in the the discussion area, and you know, encourage you you know do to try it out if you would if you would like to. Um, the one other thing that I you know it's kind of uh, you know in this amount of time, obviously you know there's you know many more dimensions of this uh, that we don't have time to get into, but I think you know, one of the points I want to make you know as you think as an instructional. A designer or a faculty member who is who is in a um, or even a, you know planning a, a workshop series that is not in a formal academic setting, whatever it might be, um, thinking about how much of this you want to develop and how much of it you want the students to develop. So, for example, if I have um, a group of people who don't have very much experience with collaboration and I don't also have the time uh, to allow, you know, for, you know, just working on the collaborative process itself, then I might say, well, as an instructor, I'm going to design kind of the, I'm going to come up with the parameters, I'm going to give them a template uh, for, you know, their uh, agreement you know, within the group and, you know, kind of lay this out and then, um, you know, ask the students to kind of, you know, work within those boundaries. Or on the other side, let's say I have a group of um, graduate students who are uh, more experienced and I want them to, I want them to figure it out for themselves. I want them to decide whether they do it parallel or sequential or how they use dialogue. I want them to figure that out. And, you know, we have time for that. Um, then, uh, then I might, you know, only set, you know, kind of the boundaries that might be, you know, what the, um, you know, what the final assign submission uh, needs to include and leave it up to them to figure out. So, you know, because I, the, the figuring out is a part of the learning um, I want them to achieve. So, I think, you know, those are, you know, some of the kinds of things that um, we want to think about as we're trying to design. So let's see if we have some uh, other, and so we, you know, there is a discussion forum set up and I will post the uh, materials I just described and, you know, continue to uh, answer any questions that are posted there throughout the week. Um, so let's see what other questions have you posted or if there are things that you'd like to ask at this point. So, yeah, so as you say, you know, select from these levels which would be most appropriate, most suitable for, for a particular project. Yes, that's, that's kind of the underlying um, stage here that, or, uh, you know, thought process here to say, well, given the nature of the work we're doing together, you know, what, you know, does it lend itself to 
you know, which of these types of, um, say, ways of, of organizing the work, um, which of the, you know, and, and depending on the nature of the group and the size of the group, you know, what kinds of uh, dialogue do we need? How often do we need to have, you know, some focus on, you know, our communication uh, throughout this, you know, because let's say, you know, we're just assuming that the other people in our parallel process are getting done what they're supposed to get it done, and then, uh-oh, somebody didn't get it done. Now, you know, what are we going to do? So, uh, you know, building in communication and checkpoints, et cetera, uh, you know, will help people to feel that they are, uh, you know, confident that they're on track. So what other questions uh, do you have? Let's give people a minute or two to post some questions. Okay. Um, the resources will be available for download. Um, we'll be sure of that. And the recording will also be available quite soon, possibly even later today. Yes, I will. I will post some things, you know, after this uh, session. So, okay, so, we're as, as you're as people are posting their questions. I'll just say that that the um, the thought of developing this, you know, as a taxonomy, I mean, when, you know, as a, from the time that I was an undergraduate student studying education, I was always uh, intrigued by Bloom's taxonomy, and anybody who's read anything I've written has seen that I keep using Bloom's taxonomy, you know, for all kinds of purposes, uh, and I found, you know, that it's such a, um, you know, having something that, you know, really, like, lays out the different levels, um, you know, it, it can be used by people, you know, and whether you're teaching, you know, young children or uh, doctoral students. And, you know, I wanted to develop something. I, you know, it'd be pretentious to say I think the, this will, you know, reach the level of Bloom's taxonomy, but that kind of flexible model that people can use to to really, you know, look at something and and figure out, you know, what, what they're trying to achieve. And um, at the same time, to... Um, like Bloom's taxonomy, where people will use that as a way to um, to think through, you know, what they want students to achieve, you know, at, at, at those various levels and where, um, you know, whether they need to start at that basic knowledge level or whether they're ready to evaluate and analyze something that, um, you know, that that, you know, allows um, you to build assignments and activities and projects that where, you know, the, the students are acquiring whatever the subject matter um, might be, you know, as well as learning something about process. So with Bloom's taxonomy, we're kind of learning about creative and critical thinking while we're acquiring the knowledge. And with my taxonomy, hopefully, um, you know, people are learning about, you know, to, to build their confidence in on being able to work collaboratively and being able to organize uh, some, you know, larger effort, you know, in a way that that will, um, you know, encourage the best uh, contributions of, of everyone. Janet, thank you so much for sharing your taxonomy with us in this seminar. Um, even in this very, very condensed form, it is obvious that there is so much richness in this taxonomy. There's real treasure here. There is a lot that any of us could pick up and start applying right away. Um, we're running out of time in that we're off to the scheduled time for the close. Um, I don't know if people are willing to stay for a few minutes longer, um, but I would suggest that if you can, cannot stay any longer, you need to go on to your next meeting or activity then we should continue in the forum. If you want more, come join us in the forum. Um, but for the people who do stay longer, it looks like Janet actually, Janet looks like you want to actually say a few more things. Yeah, let me just uh, close by, you know, this, I've got just kind of some, some steps that I think, you know, for 
uh, organizing for success. Uh, so, you know, first is the, the, the planning process, uh, clarifying the roles and the expectations. So, you know, as an instructor, um, we are uh, also need to clarify our own roles and what students can expect from us in terms of troubleshooting or uh, coaching along the way. Um, building trust and open communication, you know, modeling that and giving people some, um, you know, guidance about how they might uh, achieve that. Uh, tr working to commit towards a common purpose and then um, as instructors, once we are, you know, underway with this kind of project, um, to facilitate and assess uh, fairly, uh, so that everyone feels that they have, um, you know, say that the incentives and rewards that that fit, uh, and build towards uh, the ability to have that kind of synthesizing mind, and you know, being able to really incorporate ideas from um, other people and other disciplines and other perspectives uh, into, you know, whatever it is, you know, we're working on, whether it is um, our own individual, you know, outcome, the report, the project, the dissertation or thesis, or whether we are trying to um, synergize, you know, out, outputs into, you know, a common uh, project or, or presentation or report, et cetera. So, Again, um, thanks to everyone, and we'll see you uh, in the discussion forum.